What if I told you that having less stuff could make you a happier person? It sounds a bit crazy, doesn't it? Buy this, and you'll be prettier. Own this, and you'll be more successful. Acquire this, and your happiness will know no bounds. We believe if we've bought this, that, and the other thing, we must be in seventh heaven, right? Unfortunately, for most of us, the answer is no. In fact, quite often, the opposite is true. Many of these items and their empty promises are slowly sucking the money out of our pockets, the magic out of our relationships, and the joy out of our lives. We look around our house at all the things we have bought and feel overwhelmed instead of overjoyed, struggling with credit card debt. Barely recall the purchases on which we are making payments. If you secretly wishing a gale force wind would blow the clutter out of home, leaving you an opportunity for a fresh start, then a minimalist lifestyle may well be your salvation. Most people associate minimalism with the word empty. Unfortunately, empty isn't appealing. It's mean with loss, deprivation, and scarcity. According to minimalism philosophy, we need to look at empty from another angle. Think about what it is instead of what it isn't. And now you have space. Space. That's something we could all use more of. Space in our closets, space in our garages, space in our schedules, space to think, play, create, and have fun with our families. And that's the beauty of minimalism. For example, a container is most valuable when it's empty. One cannot showcase his garden's blooms when wilted flowers fill the vase. Similarly, when our homes, the containers of our daily lives, are overflowing with clutter, our souls take a backseat to our stuff. We no longer have the time, energy, and space for new experiences. We feel cramped and inhibited, like we can't fully stretch out and express ourselves. Thus, becoming minimalists puts us in control of our stuff. We reclaim our space and restore function and potential to our homes. We remake our houses into open, airy, receptive containers for the substance of our lives. And by achieving so, we declare independence from the tyranny of clutter, which feels positively liberating. How do we get there? Where do we start? Minimalism isn't about buying fancy containers or storage systems to shuffle around your stuff. It's about decreasing the amount of stuff you have to deal with. It's about cultivating a minimalist mindset. It's about discover the freedom of living with just enough to meet our needs. Developing a minimalist mindset will transform the way we make decisions about the stuff we have and the stuff we bring into our lives. Instead of being a short-term fix, it'll be a long-term commitment to a new, wonderful way of life. A minimalist mindset is about realizing that our stuff exists to serve us, not the other way around. See your stuff for what it is, name it, define it, and take the mystery out of it. Question yourself, what exactly are these things you spend so much time and energy acquiring, maintaining, and storing? And how did there get to be so many of them? Generally speaking, stuff can be divided into three categories. Useful stuff, beautiful stuff, and emotional stuff. Useful stuff are those items that are practical, functional, and help us get things done. Some of them are essential to survival. Others make our lives a little easier. Anything you use often and which truly adds value to your life is a welcome part of a minimalist household. Aesthetic appreciation is an important part of our identities and should not be denied. Beautiful things bring a deep and joyful satisfaction to our souls. Therefore, such items have every right to be part of our lives. 
You are not what you own. It's not easy to be a minimalist in a mass media world. Advertisers constantly bombard us with the message that material accumulation is the measure of success. They exploit the fact that it's a lot easier to buy status than to earn it. How many times have you heard that more is better, fake it till you make it, or clothes make the man? They tell us that more stuff means more happiness, when in fact, more stuff often means more headaches and more debt. The purchase of all this stuff is certainly benefiting someone, but it's not us. Nevertheless, we occasionally fall prey to the advertiser's pitch. Therefore, we must account for another subcategory of items we own, aspirational stuff. These are the things we buy to impress others or to indulge our fantasy selves. Take automobiles, for example. We can satisfy our need for transportation with a simple car that gets us from point A to point B. Why then would we pay double or even triple the price for a luxury car? Because automakers pay advertising firms big bucks to convince us that our cars are projections of ourselves, our personalities, and our positions in the corporate world or social hierarchy. We have to remember that our memories, dreams, and ambitions aren't contained in these objects. They're contained in ourselves. We are not what we own. We are what we do, what we think, and who we love. By eliminating the remnants of unloved pastimes, uncompleted endeavors, and unrealized fantasies, we make room for new and real possibilities.